you know where you are? This is Nollywood Pictures TV. Samuel, what are we doing here? I mean, why did you bring me here? You can never claim to know what you think you know until you know what others know about the same thing. I don't understand what you're talking about. You speak in parables. You deceived me, Jessica. You led me astray. If it wasn't for you, I would still be alive. Now you're beginning to scare me. I I'm leaving. Look at me, Jessica. Turn around. No! <laughs> I'm sincerely sorry for him. The spirit of your late husband may be at work. Are you talking about? He castigated and made mockery of your husband simply because he had no son. Don't you know the reason they treat you the way they do is simply because that you don't have a son? And now, a few months after your husband's death, his son, his only son, died. Are you not seeing what I am seeing? The spirit of your late husband struck the boy dead to maintain a level of equilibrium. The spirit of my husband cannot do that. Huh? Well, if you say the spirit of your late husband cannot do it, then it must be the law of karma. Men that perpetuate wickedness in families do not always test the best of life. Well, I'm surprised you're claiming to be my friend. I am not claiming to be your friend. I am your friend. Oh, I'm sorry, Paul. I don't believe you. I will never believe you. You were with them the day they came to tell me my husband would be buried at the cemetery. Yet, you said nothing. No, no. I told them what they were about to do was wrong and against any known custom. The reason why you think I didn't tell them anything was because I didn't say it in your presence. They rejected what I said and now the law of karma is made manifest in them. So where would the boy be buried? In his compound at a particular point in his uh, ubi. Why not bury the boy at the cemetery? Uh -huh. I suggested the same thing. I suggested they bury him at the cemetery but he misunderstood me to be making jest of him. Well, just, just leave them. Let the ancestors fight this war. This is a wicked word. Mm. This is a wicked word indeed. But you are far, far more better than him. How am I better? Where I've been banished to live like a beggar. In an old house my husband left years ago. Tell me, Paul, how am I better than this man? You are still a woman. He's no longer a man. He cannot reproduce. How? Shh. This is a family secret. The last time he was sick, he was diagnosed of having cancer of the scrotum. And the doctor said that the only, the only way to save his life was to remove his testicles. That man you're seeing has no testicles. That is why I said you are a better man. Was my husband aware of this? Oh yes. He was there when we had a major family meeting where we took that decision to give the doctor a go-ahead order. He didn't tell you because the same way I did not tell my wife. It was our family secret. But now that your husband is no more, I think you should know some of the things he knew. Oh God, I'm so empty. God, I'm so down, I'm so weak, who will fight for me? The spirit of death has found his way into your family. Huh. I see one death. Mm. 
then I see another. A man. A well-dressed man standing tall amongst others. He's asking me to tell you to always stand by the truth. Hmm. Young man, reject sudden death. Huh. I reject sudden death. I reject sudden death. I reject it. I reject sudden death. I reject it. You must not bury him in the compound. Who? Your dead brother. Hmm. He belongs to the gods. I must be taken to them. If you bury him in the compound, you will ignore the wrath of the gods against your family. Uh, but uh, can this be avoided? It is for the chief priest of the shrine to say. Hmm. Oh, you tell the wife, tell her to return what her husband owes the partner. Tell her she's wasting her time with the occult. The gods, they are far bigger than the occult. She must return the money. She must release that money. Tell her she must release the money. I was warned in a dream that we must never bury you aside in the compound. But you never listened. Mean my only son to be buried in the bush? It was the idea we bury our brother at the cemetery and rent his house. That is his house. He was a proper chief in this village. And you made me support you. We buried him at the cemetery. Can't you see everything is going wrong? My children are, are no longer showing sign of progress. And your son's dead. My business is no longer progressing since I injected that proceed into it. Can't you see everything is going wrong? Now, are you insinuating that my son's death in far away Australia is connected with this? I can't see you reasoning properly. I can't. Our wife took the case to the shrine. What? To which shrine? And who gave her the audacity to take the family to the shrine? This is no time to shout. We acted wickedly. Hello, sir. How's the bullet? 
I'm already waiting for you at the VIP lodge of Hotel Millennium. It is very urgent. Meet me here 4.30 p.m. and don't fail. I hope there's no problem, sir. Not important until I see you. 4.30 p.m. and don't fail. Okay, sir. That was the commissioner of police. Please, we are coming with me at 4.30 to meet him. Did he tell you why he wants to see you? He didn't tell me, but he said until I come there. Commissioner, sir, I was with Oswald Woodman when he called. I decided to come with him. For the past few minutes, he'll be staring at us. Any problem? Ozabule. Sir. I've called you here not to waste any time. I've called you to inform you that I have vacated your property. Vacated the property already? Exactly. Why should you vacate the house? Why should I vacate the house? I'll tell you. Every night, there are strange masquerades singing around your property. Yes. When some of us go to bed, the singing will start. When we wake up, we will not see any mask on it. But I know, I know, I am old enough, I am a lot experienced, I know what is happening. And that is why I decided to quit the property. So, I've called you here for two reasons. One, to inform you about this development and two, to ask you for my refund. You are refund? You are not deaf. We have heard you, sir. Please, give us a few days to sort out this matter. We shall be back with you. A few days, you said? I'll give you one week. One whole week. Yes. But don't allow me to send my men after you. What do I do? How do you explain? I used the money to bring back my son's cops from Australia. You gave me the money for the final clearance. The question now is, from where do we get 13,000 United States dollars? Apart from the one I gave you for the clearance, I still have my... Eh? Though I invested into my business, I can still pull it from there. You try and get something, and I will get mine. I don't want police case, please. Can't you see the gods are against us? The police could be more dangerous than the guards. Zako, you cannot leave me like that. I'm your brother. Please, I need your help. I don't have this money anywhere. 
Please, I need your help. Please, be good. You also know I cannot get that kind of money. You try and get something. I will get mine. Then we take it to the commission of police and explain. Yes. When the new uh, tenant comes in, we pay him the balance. Do you still have the intention of renting that place? Yes. I am not part of it. Hi. I'm I'm ruined. I am now alone. Oh. If you give that man his 30%, you will still have the rest of the money. Yes. I know I will still have the rest of the money. But I'm concerned about what people will say. I can't destroy myself by giving him that money. That's why I've come to you. Think less of ego. And think about your life. I don't know how long the postponement will last. But I see that. I see death! And I know that this death will come. Prophet, why are you still talking about death? I've given you a lot of money. Is there nothing you can do? <laughs> there is a limit. Money could go. These are gods and not spirits. I have control power over the spirits and not the gods. Return this money to this man and trace your way back to the abode of the gods and apologize for your stubbornness. They will forgive you. And if you do this, if you do this, <laughs> this God that I'm seeing now will show his sword. Oh, all right, Prophet. I'll give him the money tonight. And what happens to me? You will come back tomorrow. And I will tell you what you must do. Hello? Mr. Gideofo, I called you to know if you have gotten your 30% that you were disturbing my entire world for. Yes, I got it. Now listen to me. I want you to do yourself a favor and go to the shrine and I please the God. Go to hell with your shrine. Do you hear me? Go to hell with your shrine. Rubbish. Should I tell you the truth? I know exactly what is running through that head of yours. Let me be sincere with you, Paul. You are my late husband's brother. You should not even nurse the thought of sleeping with me. It is wrong and it's... Excuse me, excuse me. I'm, I, I am very sorry. But there's nothing wrong in what I am asking you to do. I am very serious. I'm not tricking you into it. If, if you accept my proposal to rem remarry you, I will go straight ahead to the elders and inform them of my intention. And I will remarry you officially. Not that I so wish to sleep with you or anything, but to make sure to see if we could have a son 
for my late brother so that he can, he can inherit that big house. I am serious. I don't want to say that you're sick, but you're surely sounding as if you were sick already. Me? Sick? Okay. Can I tell you that you'll be going back to that house very soon? Which house? That big house. Go back and tell them that I will not share my house with the police commissioner. They sent me out of that house with traditional intimidation. The house my husband built with is sweat. I leave the gods to fight for me. The just shall live by faith, and I am living by my faith. Calm down. You are not sharing any apartment with anybody. The police commissioner ran away. He ran away and asked them to refund the money he paid. Where did you get this? I am telling you what happened. The gods sent Onyegulu and the masquerade. They disturbed them day and night until they ran away. What is Onyegulu? Onyegulu. Onyegulu is an ancient masquerade. He doesn't appear often because of sins of men. men. Too many sins of men. But normally when he appears, he appears at the back of an evil doer. He'll be calling the person's name morning night morning night afternoon morning night afternoon until the person repents or he dies Excuse me. hello i don't know your exact location but i can confirm to you that also bullier is dead what tell me you're joking he hanged himself When did this happen? Just now. The body had just been discovered dangling in the ceiling fan in his room. This is more than mere abomination. Please come over immediately. I'll be there. Paul, you're scaring me. What is happening? He hanged himself. Who hanged himself? Bullier hanged himself. Ichin Zako just called me that his lifeless body has been discovered dangling on the ceiling following his house. I, 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 I must go now. I'm so weak. Who will fight for me? I'm done crying. Who will do the fight? Oh, yeah. <laughs> you better have some man. <laughs> Please sit down. <laughs> no, thank you. No. Well, where are you? I am happy you are here for the Thanksgiving. It shall be well with you. He said. <laughs> it shall be well with you too. Thank you, my son. We actually pleaded with her to come with us, but she refused. Oh no! Don't worry about her. Uh, we. We don't have to dignify her by sitting here to discuss her. She is up against the gods. Mm -hmm. And whatsoever any man sows, that yes, he shall reap. <laughs> you can go now. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. bro. Thank you, 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 bro. Thank we have come to ask you to temper justice with mercy. There is no against any fact that we have hurt you. Nobody told me anything of this sort. I had the erroneous impression that the decision to bury your husband in the cemetery was entirely yours. And according to them, your husband directed there that he should be buried in the cemetery. Well, based on the outlandish nature of his behavior, I believe he gets such instruction. And based on that information, I allowed the burial to take place in the cemetery. But in Zako, Unumela Alo, 
What can you do now? You are not able. Our wife, we understand they repeated the matter to Shirai. I don't blame you. If I were in your shoe, I would report the matter to seven shrines. Which of the shrines do you report it to? So that we know how to solve our problems. You know you are part of us. My husband, my knees are on the ground. No, no, please, get up, get up. Talk while seated, we'll hear you. It's strange that you are told lies. I actually showed them where my husband said he'll be buried once it happened. But they choose not to listen. Please. What we're asking you. We know you have been injured. But Tampa Justice with mercy once again a request. Where did you report us? Well, at Ogugweziebe, my sister directed me there, so I went to ask for help. Well, I have to thank you on behalf of members of this family. You don't know what you've done for this family by giving out this information. Thank you once again. We shall get back to you. Gentlemen, let's move. Okay. Hmm. At least, at least, at least we have a lead way now. Yeah? We have a lead way. Uh, but gentlemen, you see, Ogugwezie is not such a date we shall approach without preparations. We have to prepare ourselves well. I don't know what you mean by that. My life is gradually being destroyed. Now she has told us where she reported to. Let us go immediately. Zako, you don't have to rush us. You don't have to rush us. Eh? At least give me a time to make some inquiries to know how to approach such a mighty deity like a Ziebe. That's right. Uh -huh. That's right. We don't have to rush anything. We don't have to. Um, since we are not leaving right now, eh, can I ask for a few minutes? Let me go in there and see if I can get some more vital information from her. You, you know how me, women behave. He has a point. He has a point. He has a point. Okay. Do so. Okay. Let's go. Let's go. We'll be moving. Wow. I never knew there are still sincere men in this town. You never knew? Was your husband not a sincere man? There are so many sincere men in this town. The only problem is that sincere men don't make noise. They don't make noise. And it's still those sincere men that I will take you to. Immediately you accept my proposal to remarry you. See, they will explain to you that what I am asking you to do is cultural. What I am asking you to do is our custom. It's not a taboo. You're not looking at me. Look at me now. <laughs> yeah. Death has not run away from this land completely. But I will assure you that your life is intact. the agreement. You said I should return the money to him and you banish death completely. Why are you saying one year? <laughs> the master said that you should buy a special kind of oil made from the seeds of the sikamo tree. Sikamo tree? Oh yes. Sikamo tree? Where am I going to see that? Go and ask the operator of a spiritual shop down Osborne Avenue. He is a master himself. You will have to use the pomade in the evening 
or you may use your normal cream in the morning. I'm sorry to ask, Prophet, but is this ever going to end? I mean, why are you always bringing new things into the matter? If I were you, I would be on my way to the man I've named already. Go! Show you the man that will die before me. Form for me, you don't they show body. Yeah. When trouble wake ye, now I holla be that. Make you pay me, make you give me my money. Now they walk where you walk, now they walk. Now they chop where you jump, I go jump. He don't forget the past, the way we used to struggle. No, he don't they chop money. You don't forget body. You did me, my friend. You don't they show yourself on top of my money? Yeah. You come they make it younger. Now so you treat me, ah. You don't they look for trouble, no. When trouble wake ye, now I holla be that. You don't forget party. You don't they show body. When trouble wake ye, now I holla be that. Now so you treat me, ah, you don't they look for trouble, no. When trouble wake ye, now I holla be that. You don't forget party, you don't they show body. When trouble wake ye, now I holla be that. Now so you treat me, ah, you don't they look for trouble, no. When trouble wake ye, now I holla be that. You don't forget party. You don't they show body. When trouble wake ye, now I holla be that. Everywhere since I left here yesterday. I have searched the nook and cranes of this town and I can't find the oil. Most people do not even know that oil. Is there nothing else you can do? There are too many things I want to say to you, but I don't know how to start. Ah, Prophet, start from somewhere. Start from anywhere. Because I don't want to die like my husband. Start from somewhere. The decision to bury him in the cemetery was not a unanimous one. You see, they told us lies when we confide to discuss the burial. We, we are here.
to present ourselves before the shrine to prove our innocence. Yes. And to say that we are not part and parcel of the aberration mm -hmm. whatsoever. Mm -hmm. May I know the names of the men who told the lies that deceived everybody? They created the problems for us. They alleged that our late brother told his wife to rent the house once he's late and also to bury him at the cemetery. Mm. As the presence of the grave in the compound with the tenants, we had every cause to believe them because our brother has been in the habit of uh, outlandish behavior. He was capable of taking such decision. So that's why we believe immediately. Yes. But we have come to realize the truth. Speak clearly. What do you want? The hands of the gods are against us. Our wife said that she has reported this year. Also, Bully has hanged himself. But before then, his son, the only son for that matter, yes. who was studying there, messing overseas, in Australia to be precise, died mysteriously in a swimming pool. Even our newly married ones have not conceived for over a long time. Those who are due to deliver have refused to deliver. We have apologized to our wife to forgive us for the injuries he meted out to her. That's why we are here pleading with you. Please help us. Please, please help us. <clears throat> um, I want to confirm to you that this case was reported to us. And immediately, we took it to Ogugu. She arose for war. But before Ogugu could reach your family, the spirit of your ancestors had risen to address the injustice. They wanted to see if anyone should ask questions. And like I said to you before, Ogugu was asked to allow the ancestors to do this job. Now that you have asked the necessary questions, I expect you to go back home and appease the spirits of your ancestors. Thank you, the chief Thank priest. Thank you very much, the chief priest. Thank, Thank you. you. You can now go. So what really happened? They say he has a case to answer in some useless shrine. And that he can't be buried until we go there. So why are you not willing to go? Ah, Lady Rose, you expect me to go to some useless shrine and answer irrelevant questions that have nothing to do with me? It's for the sake of the dead. We are talking about your husband here. That man needs some peace. If all men are unwilling to give him peace, you, as a wife, that he loves so much, to the best of my knowledge, should give him peace. I have tried to give him peace. I went and got some undertakers to bury him, but his useless brothers and sisters refused. Why? They want to go to the shrine. This is madness, because I will never go there. I won't. Let me tell you the truth that I know very well. The shrine kills. The shrine cannot kill me. I don't want you dead. That's why I'm asking you to go. It is good you've returned the money to the man. They're insisting you come. That means there's some issues to be resolved. Don't expose yourself to the wrath of God. Lady Rose, is something speaking through you? I mean, are you the one talking like this? You're disappointing me. Hey, 
Lady Rosie, you are surprising me. See what you are saying. So what exactly are you talking about? You mean your late brother took greater part of the money or what? What are you talking about? Yes, sir. I gave it to him for the clearance of his son's cops here at our international airport. This is all I'm keeping. My niece are done really with you to take it. It is good you ran away. The songs we are hearing we are from one deadly masquerade called Onyekun. He moves and sings as if they were in thousands. The Almighty God will pay you back. I'm not keeping any couple. The amount in this envelope is all I'm keeping. Let's just get out of here. Go back to that house. Any money, tankable, one hundred, two hundred, that belongs to me. Get it back to me right here. Okay? Yes, I'll do. Has she forgotten the time? She's supposed to be here by now. Maybe she's painting her face. She has never ceased to see herself like a girl. I am sure she's painting her face. The man is married off ma. Will you? Will you stop castigating that woman? Elders, please caution Moe not to castigate that woman. If she's painting her face or not painting her face, why is it your business? Why are you attacking me, Paul? You know that I'm telling the truth. You're telling the truth indeed. You see what I'm saying? We are here on a serious issue. A burning issue. And we here is trivializing it. Why? Why? My people, Unamaka is our wife. We should learn how to treat and respect her. See, let me tell you, if, you, if we learn how to treat and respect women that we marry from other lands, then we expect men that marry our women from other lands to respect them too. Let us be serious for once. Let's go to We have gotten everything required for the cleansing of the compound. Actually, the problem is ours and not yours. We've just called you in to know what we are doing. All we require from you is to give us your consent and then we shall carry on with the cleansing air of the compound. It will take place this midnight. I don't have any problem with that. Good. Ono Zako will bring in your daughters this night. Once again, we are sincerely sorry for what happened. About the property, you are free to do whatever you fancy with it. If you want to sell it, all right. If you want to rent it, all right. If you want to live within our midst, you are welcome. The property is entirely your husband's. And we hands off everything. Thank you. I really appreciate your efforts. I've always known you to be an upright man. I should have told you before going to the shrine, but I was meant to understand that the decision was made by all. So, I thought I had no one to run to. I'm sorry. Not to worry, my dear. But, Ozawaya, sir, you did not say anything about my husband. Are you not going to assume him and bury him properly in his compound? We did not forget that part. 
There are some experts who exhume body from one grave to the another grave. We don't have such people in our time. We are sent for them from Aruchipu. They have will be here in three days' time. We are saying we are going to cleanse the compound so that you could move in with our daughters. We have not forgotten the subject of burying your husband properly. It could be done when you people are already packed into the compound. My wife, everything in the heart is intact. The police commissioner did not spoil anything. They are all in the same position he left them. Please, we are free to go back there. Nana, you must take heart. Just take it easy. Sister, people will think that we are caused. Some are speculating that already. You lost your husband, now I've lost mine. Oh, that's nonsense. We are not cursed, and you know that. Who can curse us? Just four days into the marriage, I lost my husband. A man sleeping in the same bed with me. Have you made any investigation? Like, has his family asked questions? Like, investigated his death? His brothers arrested one lady for complicity in his death. A lady? Yes. How? From what I gathered so far, they said that he met the lady when he was still very young. And the lady was a primary school teacher. He co she completed immensely in, in his trip abroad. He came back and said the lady was too old for him. He needed a younger girl. Were you aware of that? He never mentioned that to me. So what happened? His brothers went and inquired and they were told that the lady, out of frustration, reported him into a certain shrine. In a shrine? What, what shrine is that? I mean, when? I mean, what shrine? I don't know the name. But his brothers are doing everything possible to resolve the matter with the shrine. Do you think the shrine killed him? This is not a nurse. I've witnessed several deaths firsthand in my career. I've never seen anything like this. The way my husband died still beats my imagination. How did he die? It happened so fast. It first started as meningitis. Just like meningitis, with very severe pain, fever. He started vomiting. All of a sudden, his neck started turning. I called the doctor. But before he could get there with the ambulance, he had already died. Just like that. Just like that. The fearful thing is that the whole thing was pulled out of his mouth. How, how do you mean his tongue was pulled out from his mouth? His entire tongue was completely pulled out of his mouth. The doctors tried everything humanly possible to push it back into his mouth, but they couldn't. So? Even the brothers met the doctor, trying every, everything possible in their profession to push the talk back into his mouth. Still, to no avail. So what happened? They took him to the mortuary like that. It was the tongue that now made his brothers to start asking questions. After arresting the lady, what did she say? She said nothing. Even learned that the police want to release her for lack of evidence. I have looked into the various allocations in this market and I saw that you have 15 stores in your name and that is the highest any individual can ever have. 
And what about it? Mr. Sula, I am paying rent on all these stores that are listed in my name. I want to understand the meaning of that statement you just made. Well, what I'm saying, Chief, is that we have rules guiding these markets. We make all the laws. In fact, we own this market. That is not the issue, Chief. But whoever allocated such number of stores to you violated the policies and rules of this market. Nonsense. So what are you insinuating? Mr. Slow? Are you insinuating that you want to take all these stores away from me and give to someone else? Is that what you're insinuating, Mr. Slow? I'm asking you. Well, Chief, taking the shops away from you and allocating it to some other persons is really an option which I've not really considered. Although there's the possibility anyway. You see, I intend making the masses to have a feel of this democracy. Well, Chief, I'm afraid to tell you that the stores you applied for cannot be granted anymore. Is it? Yes. In that case, I am going to call the local government chairman. I put him there for him to protect us. To manipulate him all the time. Listen to me, Mr. Slow. I am leaving from this office. You are leaving this office, Mr. Slow. Look at you. Another the market master talking to me with impunity. Do you know the man that is standing here with you? Do you know the caliber of man that is standing here? Well, um. Do you know the man? Well, Chief, I do not intend to make you angry. You can have your seat. I don't want to see that in office. I'm okay. I'm standing. Talk, speak, speak, speak. Well, Chief. Really, I do not intend to make you angry. But I still maintain that we have standards in this man. I am standard. This man standing here, I am the very definition of standard. Listen to me. I am the owner of this market. We own this market. We founded this market. We are the people that are trading in this market. Now listen, I am going to call an extraordinary meeting of the market caucus. Members of the market caucus, I am calling an extraordinary meeting of all members this night. We are going to draw up a new set of bylaws guiding this market. This night, the laws, we are going to make these laws this night. We are going to type these laws and we are going to gazette these laws this night. When you come to this office tomorrow, we are going to meet a new law guiding this market. And under the new law, we are going to make this night, Mr. Slow. A riffraff like you will never be market master. In fact, this your error signals the end of riffraff market master in this market. I said it. So shall it be. Well, Chief, I am so sorry if I got you angry. But I still maintain that you and your cockles cannot meet and make loss for this market. It is not done anywhere, Chief. So may I know the people that are making this loss? Or are you telling me that you are the sole authority that will make the laws and will pass the laws down to us for us to begin to obey? Is that what you are saying, Mr. Sulu? Uh, I make no laws, Chief. The laws guiding these markets are made by government authorities. So, Chief, you and your caucus cannot decide or make laws for this market. Then we are going to sack the so-called government authorities. If they fail to make laws to protect people like us, then we are going to fire all of them. Suck all of them. Are you listening to me, Mr. Sulu? The laws must protect people like us. Because we are the people that are controlling the economic system. We are the people that are paying taxes to government. In millions of Naira. We pay money to government to sustain government. So if men in government should not make laws that are protecting our interests, they are in trouble because I'm going to remove all of them. Are you listening to me, Mr. Sulu? I am communicating to you. Look at you sitting down here. Your error is counted in hours. Nonsense. Something your brother was doing for me with ease. They brought you here from only God knows where and you're you proving to be a Taishi. You're proving to be to the Magretasha. Useless you idiot. Give me just other stores. I told you in confidence that I have goods coming from China. I need stores to market these goods. I need series of stores. What is preventing you? I'm going to pay you. Give me stores for me to do my business and refuse it. Can you imagine? That riffraff that was sent here as the new market master telling me about rules. What does he know about rules? I told him that we are the rules and he didn't even understand what I was saying. But um, Chief, what uh, exactly did he tell you? He told me that I already own 15 stores in the market. I mean, 
What is his business with that? Can you go to Basia? Um, is he planning to cut the number of your shops? You put one name. Chief. That idiot that was sent here as the market master looked me in the eyes and told me that cutting down the number of stores I own in the market is actually an option he has not considered. Can, I don't, can you people understand it? I called us here this night as my colleagues in the market caucus because I want us to take a decision. I want us to come up with new set of rules that will streamline how this market should be run from now onwards. Because I want us to deal with that riffraff. I want us to deal with the idiot. Chief, could you please tell us exactly what he said? He was very emphatic. That idiot that has no money, that cannot boast of just one millionaire anywhere on earth, was telling me that my application for additional stalls in the market has been rejected. Can you imagine that? Did you actually apply for more shops? You were. I don't understand what your problem is. Of course, I applied for three additional stores in the market. Or do you think I don't have the right to expand my business tentacles? I am a man on the move. I keep expanding. Do you have any problem with that? I'm asking three of you. Do you? Chief, uh, you shouldn't have more than three shops in that market. That is true. You already have 15 shops. I'm applying for more. Chief, uh, I don't know. There's a way three of you are looking at one another as if you think I'm blind, I'm not seeing or something. Three of you are looking at yourselves as if you have gone to discuss with that idiot in the market office. Have you gone to discuss with him? No, Chief, oh, we, we did not discuss anything with him. You are just attacking that young man unnecessarily. But I'm talking at him. Talking at him. I'm not attacking the man because the man has already dug his own grave. In fact, the man is digging his grave. And let me tell you one thing. If any man has succeeded in digging his own grave, I will push him inside the grave. If I see any man that wants to die, I will help him to die faster. You see a trailer that is coming towards you. That trailer has lost control. It has no brakes. The driver is shouting, calling for help. And you are standing in front of this trailer because you have some set of rules in your hand. That trailer is going to crush you and it's going to cross your set of rules. This man that is sitting here, I am that trailer. I call us here because we are all colleagues in the market caucus. I want us to work together. But he just refused to work with me and started my way. I will cross everybody. Chief. I can go alone, yes? We sincerely don't understand you, Chief. We simply do not see anything wrong with the young man's submission. Allow others to get allocation. 15 stalls in strategic places in the market should be good enough for anyone. Be reasonable, Chief. Okudele? Okudele? Am I the one you are calling unreasonable? Okudele? Is it because I called you for this meeting? I'm just trying to be realistic. No, Chief, it's not like that. I'll try to understand him. Try to understand him. Let's reason. I mean, let's try to be reasonable here. Samuel, what are we doing here? I mean, why did you bring me here? You can never claim to know what you think you know until you know what others know about the same thing. I don't understand what you're talking about. You speak in parables. You deceived me, Jessica. You led me astray. If it wasn't for you, I would still be alive. Now you're beginning to scare me. I I'm leaving. Look at me, Jessica. Turn around. No! <laughs> like that. You, you're not even showing concern. If you leave this apartment in the morning, do not come back. Excuse you? Are you talking to me? You had me right. See, 
You made me go against my personal decision not to sleep with any other man's wife. She ruled me to sin and I have repented of that sin. Do not call me again. <sighs> Don't be silly. I intend to travel to Europe with you. I have enough money to wipe away your sorrow. And I'm telling you this now that I'm not interested. I have no other sorrow except you. And I have to need to cut it off with you. I want you to breathe my lips. I owe you nothing. The next time I get to see your futile legs inside this apartment, you forget the day you met me. So you read my lips, young man. If you ever try that, you will regret it. I will so deal with you in all the nooks and cranes in this town, you will regret it. Actually, you will seek for suicide as an option. You are stupid. You are mad. In fact, you are, you are crazy. Hmm? You first of all survive what is coming to you before you think of dealing with anyone. See, that is like you are the main reason why many men are afraid of getting married. You kill your husband, eh? You think I cannot tell you that? Eh? How dare you speak to me in that tone? You have killed my husband. He deserves that punishment because he was the one who came up with the idea of stealing the money. In my view, death is the highest punishment you can give to a man. You have done that. Now tell me, how much do you want me to pay? And I will pay. 